uh, of guest lecture. We, as you know, we are having a series of uh, guest lectures, and uh, many experts from India and abroad have uh, <coughs> obliged us by joining this platform and enriching the uh, or sharing their experience uh, with our faculty and the students. Today, I also welcome uh, the latest addition to our faculty, Dr. Ajit. Uh, he is from Gadwasu and uh, he has joined as professor in uh, veterinary gynecology and obstetrics. So, uh, I welcome the speaker, uh, today's speaker, and my old friend, Dr. Satish Kumar, who spent uh, uh, his, you know, <clears throat> Work valuable time at NDRI and the National Bureau of Animal Genetic Resources. Then he moved to uh, CCMB and uh, now he is uh, working at Central University Mahindragar, Central University of Haryana. So Dr. Uh, Satish Kumar is a renowned uh, personality, renowned scientist in uh, the field of animal genetics and especially the genetic diversity and gene knockout technology. He has been a group leader at uh, CCMB and uh, he is very down to earth and uh, very straightforward also. So I thought it fit to talk to him and invite him to interact uh, with our faculty and uh, I find that uh, many of the senior faculty are here. I also welcome all the senior faculty uh, that are uh, Kapoor Registrar is here, Dr. Beniwal is here, is, uh, he, was, he has already interacted with you, uh, I could, uh, you know, when I joined, uh, he was in conversation with you, Dean Vatnari, Dr. Prashad is here, so, uh, on my screen I find uh, uh, 37 participants right now. So more will be joining and uh, Dr. Veer Singh, I see he has also joined our Dean PG. And uh, from New Zealand, we have faculty uh, who went for international training to New Zealand, Dr. Koslender. Dr. Koslender, Koslender, Koslender is here, so he has joined from uh, New Zealand. And, uh, Good morning, sir. Good morning. I also see our young faculty here and uh, many more are, you know, likely to get into this. So I don't want to uh, spend more time on this, but uh, I may add here that one of the uh, distinctions and I'm happy to share with you that uh, Dr. Satish Kumar is on the International Society of Animal Genetics Diversity Group on Animal Genetic Diversity by FAO. So <clears throat> this is a, a, you know, a kind of recognition, international recognition. And uh, uh, to save time, I request Dr. Satish Kumar uh, to take the floor. So welcome back. with you people and at the outset let me thank you in these otherwise very depressing times to see number of colleagues old and new and uh, I'm looking forward to a very productive interaction and I hope some of the thoughts which I'm going to share with you all they are going to be useful the way I have planned this lecture today is that I am assuming that there will be some new faculty, as I was told, some new faculty have joined. Particularly, I am targeting towards youngsters. Is it correct? Sure, sure. Yeah, we are we are having a bunch of uh, sort of around thirteen new colleagues and uh, one senior faculty as a new colleague. So, all right. So, in uh, case some yeah. of the things they appear trivial to the to the people of my age, then my apologies in the beginning itself, but uh, I have sort of uh, pitched it towards the, the newer faculty. And as the, the title, I have given some performing and achieving excellence. Now, the way I have, first of all, let me congratulate all the new faculty who have joined the university. 
and I am really, really glad I have known Professor Anushra Singh since I think 1975, and as a as a senior colleague at NDRI as well as in the ICAR, ARS, and then later on we have continued interacting. Now, the way I have planned it, what I will do is that first little bit of preamble, and then I will, I will just start with the, the as if that when you are into, in, right from your university setup, when you are coming in and changing the role to be a teacher, and then, while then trying to perform and then ultimately excelling and uh, getting to that step in the established leaders in the field. Now, towards the end of it, I will make it more like a veterinary sciences and animal sciences teachers and faculty in that kind of environment. And then I will end, particularly in these times, that's when we are having all these pandemic so how veterinary science on one hand has become very, very relevant, or animal science has become very relevant, not only to, to, to veterinary sciences or particular sector of agriculture, but life in general, internationally. And also I would try to see what are these challenges, some of the, I will mention towards the end, what are these special challenges that we will have to meet, and of course, in challenges, there are opportunities all the wow. time. Now, if we look back the Indian science in general after independence, am I audible, sir? Yes. Okay. Yeah, clear. Now, if we look back the after independence, the agriculture, the science in general in the country, the two things stand out. One is the green revolution, and the second is the space research. Of course, there would have been many other laurels here and there, but these are the two significant things. And let me start with that, that what is in common in between these two? One is whenever there was a challenge to the Indian science, we, the scientists, the teachers, researchers, we met the challenge and we came up with the solutions whether it's the space research or agriculture research, and, and we achieved success. So many times we say that we sometimes, or rather many times we hear that Indian scientists, they don't or can't work together and we can't make teams. That is not true. Whenever there has been a clear leadership, I think we have made great teams and we achieved as a team. And those of us of my age would remember that in 65, 66, we did not have grains to feed our own population, but come another seven, eight years, 72, 73, and we were there to export. And similarly, all, all as animal scientists, you know, whether it's the milk production or whatever, or egg production, we achieved real great successes. Now, with this background now, Let's, let's start that when we are coming to the, as a new faculty, when you are coming to this new environment and that is agricultural research or animal sciences in particular, what, what as, a, as, a, as a faculty, what are the challenges? I'm assuming that many of us would have come to the situation starting, you did, did your PhD, maybe some postdoc experiences, here and there a couple of places. And this is the first opportunity when you come along and then you are supposed to interact directly with the students. Now, interestingly, none of us are trained as teachers at any stage, unlike in the school education, where we go for Bachelor of Education or Master of Education, and that is true for all kinds of edu higher education, whether it's in the traditional university setup, research institutions, or the agriculture or animal science institutions. That here we come, and whatever we have picked up, it is from the apprenticeship of the supervisor or the department where we work, we start from here. So I will take up at least when in terms of getting in a couple of issues. I will, some of the points I will raise for discussion and the later one we can then elaborate at, in detail. The first and the foremost thing is that colleagues, now what you come along in a new organization, your asset is your colleagues. 
whether it's in teaching or in terms of the social bonding. Now, as a newcomer, what I would, I would think is that the first and the foremost support system is going to be your colleagues who may be senior to you, who may be contemporary to you, or who have worked for a couple of years in the organization. So it's, a, it's just like a getting married and new bride coming into a new family. It's something like that. Now, whether it's knowing the organization, it's the colleague who are going to help you. Understanding the culture and ethos of the organization, it's going to be, the, again, the colleagues who are going to help you. And also, it is very important that as you start getting established, and as we say as a student of genetics, that altruism is not really altruism. Altruism, I would say, is the most extreme form of selfishness. I am altruistic because I know I am going to be benefited by that behavior, and that is also true in the organizations, that immediately you will have to start giving back to the colleagues so that there is a bonding established and a repo gets established and people around you start seeing you an asset. As you are borrowing from them, you have to lend your capabilities to the colleagues who are there already in the organization. Now, this culture of giving back will be, will be creating an environment of care and share, and particularly the students. Because the more you are going to take support from your colleagues, even all your student community is also watching you as a, as a new entrant, and then that will help you in establishing the relationship and bonding with the, with the community there in the organization. Now, whether, again, even if you have to understand that as TVL as that, that how to sign an indent and how to interact, uh, what are the leave available to you or what are the reimbursement of the bills or whatever. So we come completely naive from your colleges or as a graduate student. So this is where your colleagues are going to be. So this is my first point I want to make is that, that develop a repo and seek support from the colleagues and seek mentorship from them and then also start giving as quickly as, and as they say in the Chinese proverb, that only if the young could do, could, could do, and only if the old, sorry, it's, 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 it goes something like this, that if only the young could know and old could do. So it's just kind of a real synergy between the senior colleagues and the junior colleagues. Now, the next point is that from the day zero, as a young faculty, we will have to be careful about your professional development, whether it's establishing the, your membership of the association, knowing about the workshops, development in the subject, advancement, or personality development, and connecting with the colleague, not only with the, within the organization, but also outside the organization. In terms of knowing the teaching methods, resources available in the organization, what kind of resources are available, and that's something which what I would call the professional development. So one has to be immediately careful and start working towards the professional development. Not only the professional development help in bonding with other colleagues within the organization, but also it's equally important in your profession, whether in a narrow specialization, whether your subject specialization or narrow or wider specialization. Now, the third point I would like to make is the work-life balance. Many of us, when we start our careers, we reasonably get it wrong out of over enthusiasm, out of over experience, and we start putting a lot of energy towards what we are supposed to be doing. And of course, one has to, because it's a completely new environment, challenges are huge, and learning curve will have to be faster. But again, from the beginning, we need to remember that there's a life beyond your profession, and that will have to be a habit Otherwise, what happens is that the, you start getting a quick burnout and you become kind of isolated from your colleague. But in the beginning, when I said you have to have a repo and a kind of having a mentor mentee relationship with the colleagues around. So this is where you, you, you can always risk isolating yourself 
so it's a what i would say work life balance that it's extremely extremely important and one has to set the limits particularly as 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 i would say to the extent that when it comes to uh, the job can is going to be very, very demanding as we all know on one hand teaching research extension administrative responsibility or some expectations comes from the institution that you will start participating in building the institution now as i would say the planning i mean is that what my cardinal principle has been that lack of planning on your part can never be an emergency on my part so this is something you have to start building expectations whether you are dealing with the students or with the administration or the colleagues that all right if i am going to get an email so expect that you apply in 48 hours not less than that or whatever rules you set in on how you are going to that after your office hours or whatever it is it's your family time and it's your social time all these things Yeah. I'll check them out. Dr. Spies, are you hearing me? Yes, I am able to hear you. Now, 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 it is important not only for your professional responsibilities but also it is important to maintaining a balance that this is my family time this is my social time and this is my organization time and this is i am going to devote because if as i was saying that there is going to be a early burnout and that will affect the performance that will affect the health and in the long run it's not going to be useful to anybody one of the things that i would mention here and again for the young senior colleagues it may not be very very uh, new thing but we need to differentiate between what is important and what is urgent in fact not more than 20% of your work if i am very well organized not more than 20% is going to be urgent things can be important but not that everything is going to be urgent but if i am in the habit of procrastination then everything become urgent and then things go out of the place whether it's in the classroom or it's in the organization now the even these days whatever if a kind of tool we are using whether it's a bot or it's email or or it's telephone it's an great asset communication all the time getting communicated and that's what the technology is that we are able to now talk from a distance unfortunately these becomes liability as well so again one has to establish clean expectations that all right it's my time unless there is emergency i'm not going to ex accept any of the calls or whatever is going to be the assignment or now similarly the delivery of the assignments if i have taken assignments to check the student should expect in two weeks or 10 days or whatever it is that you need to establish so the point here if i can conclude this point is that we need to watch out for the burnout and we need to be master of your own life whether it's social private life and the professional life and there is a kind of balance now next point is comes to the teaching and it's the enthusiasm for the teaching now if we all of us if we think for a minute that in 10th standard or 12th standard what was my favorite subject and the next you think that who was my favorite teacher invariably the answer to this will be the same if sanskrit was my favorite subject i will not be surprised if you are going to say that sanskrit teacher was really fantastic so this is where as a teacher we the getting interested in the subject it again depends on your energy level in the class help the students to have a positive feedback your lack of expertise sometimes can substitute your enthusiasm for learning and when you are going to the class it's a mutual learning process all the time if you are going to behave that you are the expert that make at times create hindrances in establishing a relationship 
you know, one will have to say that I'm here in terms of imparting knowledge. At the same time, I am here to learn and I'm as curious as the students are. Now, when it comes to the subject, I'll, at least I have found always useful. Start from the basic principles, concepts. Texts are available anyway. These days, particularly the click of the button and Google Bahia is always there around to, to check the facts and these students are no exception. So again, what we need to do is to start having the concepts, basic understanding of the subject and then build from there, depending on what the kind of diversity in the, of the students there in the class. So that's what I will say, this, this enthusiasm for teaching. Put off the phone, and that may be a little better. That may be a little getting a problem. Yeah, it's, it's quite okay to say to the students that this is something I don't know, and let me check and come back tomorrow. And I will not be surprised that many times the student may be able to participate with you and check the facts or contribute to the class. So rather than bluffing, this is where it's very, very important that in the classroom, we have to be a side, kind of one amongst the equal kind of thing, rather than trying to pretend that I am the expert, here I come, and then I start there. That, of course, then I remind that the students, this, again, mobile phone these days is really a nuisance in the class, and this is something you have to set the things right. Now, the next point is that I would say that one has to be it's quite okay to be your own self in the environment with the students. The, the point is, one other days when you have your stiff upper lip and no sort of uh, nonsense tolerated or something, you have to be, again, now the generation has changed. And as sometimes I call sarcastically, that ours is a sandwich generation. When we were growing up, it was the dictatorship of the dad. And when we are now grown up, then it's the democracy of the daughters and sons. So this is where one has to remember that you have to be your own self. There is no harm. It is not an acting class. It is a teaching class. There is no point in being intimidating. You need to be welcoming, inviting support, giving support. And the learning environment has to be very, very safe. And you need to be approachable whether it's a little bit of packing small jokes here and there, because life is full of stress. And the student's life is much more stressful than what we can think of as faculty. So this is where the, 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 your class or your classroom should not add to that stressful environment. However, one important point is that given, these, given our society, the kind of background, the diversity of the students, one has to be very, very careful that there may be the issues of sensitivity, whether it's the gender sensitivity, cultural ethos, diversity, what is available in the, in the, in the classroom, that when, whatever, when you are trying to be, as I said, you have to be human. At the same time, we need to be careful about the sensitivity because I'm pretty sure in Haryanavi, being a humor, having a humor in the class can be very, very sarcastic and that may be construed entirely differently. So that's where when I would say that you have to be human, but at the same time, you have, to, you have to be very, very, very careful. Now, of course, when in the classroom environment, I am assuming that you are the subject master, you have been to all, and this is why you have been given the position, this is why we are there in the class. But in my experience, if anybody is saying that such and such guy can speak extempo, and it's a wonderful speaker. My understanding is that the more extempo somebody appears, the more preparation the gentleman or the lady has done. There's nothing like extempo in the world. It's all about the preparation. And that's where when you are getting into the class, if you have to teach 10 units, it should be at least 20 or 30 units, you should be available with you. Then only you'll be able to do justice there. And in a lighter vein, if I can say is that the, well, they say that uh, the difference between assistant professor, associate professor, and professor, the assistant professor, associate 
प्रोफेसर ना पढ़ो और ना पढ़ाओ और प्रोफेसर लड़ो और लड़ाओ तो दिस इज वेयर बी बी दैट समथिंग वन हैज टू बी केयरफुल दैट वी प्रिपेयर व्हेन यू आर गेटिंग इनटू द क्लास नाउ इन दिस सॉर्ट ऑफ व्हेन द फॉर द बिगनर्स फीडबैक इज एक्सट्रीमली इंपॉर्टेंट नाउ whether it is coming from the students or whether it is coming from the colleagues your seniors your or dean of the school head of the department vice chancellor who so maybe generally generally what happens is that when it comes to the when we are talking of the feedback uh if i can sort of uh, be a little bit sweeping here neither we have the as as indians i'm saying in general may not be true for everybody we do not have the etiquette to give a feedback and we do not have the etiquette of receiving the feedback in fact once you are giving a feedback i i i am the owner of an advertisement of british telecom and this was advertisement about the this british tele the tel, uh, this the telephony and this boy from the hostel says to the grandmother that grandma is failed and she, he narrates all the subjects he failed mathematics english history and then this grandmother said that somewhere you would have passed and he said yes i did and that's sociology and the grandmother says oh my god or logy sounds really great that you are doing what else so this is where when we give have to we give a feedback i'm pretty sure if somebody has delivered a lecture given you something there must be something very positive there must be some learning elements so one has to start from there and then build that that this is where the improvement is needed and this is where the positive thing is so whether we are giving feedback or receiving feedback and particularly the young faculty if you are immune to receiving the feedback and then we take it as a criticism and the indian set up we are very great and me included even the other guy finishes the sentence is no 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 i did not mean that so even without so this listening it's again very very important as a as a faculty now i will move to this next stage and try to spend that you have done with or gone through some of the initial feeling troubles and trying to having rapport with the your know, environment students or faculty now it comes the performing unfortunately the way the way we see the academic institution we come as bread seekers most of us that is true that we come to the organizations as bread seekers and ultimately we end up as power seekers but one has to remember that the purpose of this profession this is a great profession and the purpose is to seek knowledge and to seek truth and more so towards when it comes to the veterinary science or animal sciences or agriculture and i will develop on it at the end of it if time permits specifically in the context of agricultural sciences now who is an expert an expert is not that who knows everything an expert is somebody who is contributing to the knowledge and who can appreciate the knowledge if i start talking about genetic advancement to lay public in the marketplace or in subsequently nobody is going to appreciate unless i am a great speaker it's my colleagues and i need them who are going to appreciate and who are going to say that yes this guy knows the subject so being expert is not only being expert and knowing as much as you can but also appreciating what others are doing and trying to integrate with that now when you are starting performing updating in the subject broad knowledge and one has to never stop now at this point of time what you will be having the responsibility would be design new courses design new syllabus trying to know the colleagues elsewhere in the world and this in these days of technology times your colleagues may be sitting anywhere as today we have got one of in the journey and somebody from uh, from outside the country so this is where now building these bridges collaborations networks and with the one objective that is contributing towards the prof the profession now dealing with the students by the time you have learned and what is expected now as i hinted before one has to be caring because remember these students the diversity in this country is really really huge 
somebody in the same class will be from a well to do family coming from a urban environment and there will be next go students sitting there whose father or parents may be just labor nothing else now that you have to have that as a teacher you have to be having that caring attitude having a bonding with each of them and at the same time when you are trying to give emotional support the principle is don't get it reflected on your emotional state and your you don't drain out yourself but it's just you have sympathy the problem solving sexual harassment these are real time issues these they start appearing whether with the students whether with the faculty and then one has to be aware discrimination ours is a society unfortunately very good for pride and prejudice we are born with it and we still still lot around us so one has to be aware that how to deal with that drug abuse in fact this is again a real issue in academic institutions and briefly if i can say i have had the experience of in the university where i am now working as a provost to the boys hostel and then i had to sleep over the hostel building to find out what is the extent of drug abuse that you need to really really understand that and what makes them without being judgmental in fact interestingly i found out that these students who were involved there unfortunately they were from jnk and it was not reflecting anything but the kind of stress these students are having in their general lives now depression when it comes to the student it's a real real issue in fact the in my joining the first within second month of my joining i had to confront i had no idea because i never studied in a university i never worked in a university and the first thing that i was really jolted was is suicide by a student who was 19 year old one of the brightest student of the university and then i started learning that what's really the issue is and it turned out was very trivial some internet based relationships gone bad and this guy decided that and that that was unfortunate and that's where i started now getting in just trying to spend time with these students now in it if if i if i just i remembered and professor rameshwar singh will do remember that we had a great uh, director of ndri professor dr sundareshan and one day we were new in the first year in the hostel and there was a strike in the hostel kind of strike sundareshan was in delhi he came back at 10 o'clock direct in the crowd he entered that that was somewhere in 77 he enters in the crowd and tells these students please remember that this is a residential campus so whatever people are sleeping whatever your issues are come to my office all in the morning i'll be there at 9:30 and as a new student we were watching each and every student from the so called leaders they hiding their tail everyone went towards their their hostel rooms now this point i am going to make is that that kind of leadership you can give only if your students have the faith in your capabilities and your empathy that you are there to solve their problems so one has to have an impact uh, not dwelling much in when i just mentioned that was suicide 12 o'clock in the night and i had to confront some 400 students up in arms and no idea why sansa was out of place was this stuff anybody everybody it was saturday and i had to confront them and i thought for a while and i remembered doctor sundaresan that what he would have done there i said okay i just walked in the crowd of 400 guys who were there up to really bomb the hostel so that's something where you as again these are the things as a teacher you will have to confront these issues all the time now when it comes to again adult issues cultural milieu where you are performing is extremely extremely important somewhere if you are teaching in delhi the issues may be different if you are teaching in bihar patna the issues may be different in haryana university boys and girls going together there may be different issues village around how people are going to interact the principle there is that you will have to be have empathy understand the situation and there is no one rule or one size that will fit everybody you have to counsel the students and particularly the student variety is there 
and the, the cultural environment around is, is different. So there's no point of being judgmental. Now, particularly when we say dealing with the students, you have to learn that it's, it's a learning, employment, but enjoyment. And if you are enjoying the class, the students will. If you are not enjoying the class, students will not enjoy. Am I audible? Is it okay? Yeah, yeah fine. Sorry. So, follow, the, follow the rules. Teachers, students see what you do. They don't worry what you say. If you are not following the rules, if you are... means 8.59 and that's it. Nine door will be closed and you can come for the next day's class. I don't think you need to do ever again. So this is something where your personality develops and people will understand what, what, what you are going to be behaving like. Now, again, the moral courage will come from your what you practice, otherwise it cannot come from the, from the raw levels. Now, I will spend a little bit of time now in the, when you are trying to now, in the middle level kind of thing, the research. The research starts building up the moment, the expectation. And I would say that teaching without research is completely trial. And research without teaching is again reasonably useless. We should be very, very happy that in agricultural university setting, animal science institutions, we have not bifurcated mostly the teaching and the research. Traditionally, in traditional universities, we have had this problem of dichotomy of research, and we can talk later during the discussion, at least I don't approve of that this dichotomy of teaching and research. But on one hand, you had institution, great institution. I had the privilege to work at like CCMB. On the other hand, we have universities which are start of funds and there's no research environment. Now that model, and we are lucky that it, we are doing not only the teaching research, but there's the extension interacting with the farmers industry. So the moment you start organization, you're organizing your laboratories. Remember that it's not, your laboratory is not a collection of equipment. In fact, my prayer as a scientist would be that God give equipment to my neighbors and give me money for consumables. Because the research, particularly biological sciences, equipment are very costly. Their maintenance even much more costly. Repair is a real issue. So one has to encourage, and it's the senior leadership of the organization that comes in play, with the participation again with the dean research or head of the department that make the culture that we are not going to give any equipment to anybody and whatever equipment comes that comes in the central pool in my experience this idea of central instrumentation facility has been a pretty useless and you will wonder that what i'm saying contradictory things rather than having these central facilities and somebody takes care of half-heartedly the idea should be that if you are recruiting somebody for proteomics, let that person have two expertise. One who can provide all the feedback and expertise to proteomics to all colleagues in the organization, help them with the projects in that area, and has his own research program, which may be using the proteomics. In that case, the gentleman or lady has got a self-interest, the facility works, and Next principle is that never ever make people independent in terms of the facilities. I don't have a sense of dependent on the neighbor and I'll be nice to them. So this is where when you are organizing the facilities, the facilities will have to be, we need to learn sharing rather than it's, it, and if you are going to pool the resources, I'm pretty sure even as established scientists, at times you will have Scarcity of funds, this is a time where you can depend on other colleagues and you start without funds, you can start working. And on the other hand, if you are, you know, what is expected that if you are a senior guy, you are going to help others.
side. And now one has to understand the knowledge about the funding agencies in your own area of research. And these days, nothing stops you to going to DBT is a now great place where everybody goes there or DST or for that matter, ICR, international fundings. So one has to be by this time aware that what kind of funds available, how I can tap all those funds and ask the colleagues, help them to write how to write the grant application when you are loving this. And I will spend a little bit of time, maybe one or two minutes about the writing processes as well. Now, coming back to the research problems, we have got a serious issue. We take a problem which are soluble. We need to take a problem which requires solution rather than the problem which are soluble. I go to even to the extent that most of the time what I say is that what as a scientist what we all guilty of, the publish, promotion, forget. In fact, when you are a middle level scientist, already the order will have to be reversed. You have to have a clear mind that what is that problem which is really there. And I'm glad to share with you that the training in the agriculture sciences, veterinary sciences, gives us the perspective right, which is not true of many of these organizations of basic sciences. They have the weapons, but they don't know the problems. And it's other way around for us. So we need to be very clear vision that is the product which I'm going to be having, maybe 10 years down the line, and then go back to the patient than putting that order, I would, I would risk that, that one has to this. Now, coming back to the promotion, I'm pretty sure if you would have done okay. Uh, my experience of sitting in these, some of the times in promotion committees, recruitment committees, committees, if the performance is excellent, we all say promote. Uh, performance is average, we all say let us promote. And if the performance is below average, one of us will say Dr. Saab Cardona. Now, that's something we need not to worry about it. This is where if you are doing okay and you have, you have picked up right problems. Now, one more point there, again, I will not get into the details of this, just I will mention, these days regulating research is a great issue, whether it's Institutional Animal Ethics Committee, Biosafety Committee, Review Committee on Genetic Manipulations, Institutional Ethics, if you are working any time of stem cell research, whether it's animals still, there are issues. So again, one has to be making oneself aware that what are these issues and these, the organization will provide platform for you and you will be contributing or taking help from these organizations. Now, very, very important part and that's about the writing. Now, let me know if we have to stop in, in terms of time. It's a, so that's something which yeah, I'm picking another how much time we should spend now? I think uh, uh, you can continue to up to 11 and uh, we may keep 10-15 uh, minutes for discussion. Right, right. Uh, okay. Uh, you, your colleagues may be having engagements. I'm sitting in the, you know, what you call the lockup to follow lockdown. So that's what I am. Really. Now, writing. That is our major business, whether we are writing grant applications or whether we are going to teach students how to write. Writing, doing a research project is just like getting pregnant and it's very easy to get pregnant. Writing a publication, whether the document report is just delivering the baby and we all know the later thing. Now, this is something very, very critical as a scientist, as a faculty, you are as good as your data, what you delivered in your last talk, and whatever publication you would have put in. This is where people are going to evaluate you. So that's in writing, a couple of points I will make. Start early. If, if you are going to postpone it, it's not going to happen. There is only one way to write, and that is start writing. And I'm pretty sure if I go back and reflect my writings 20, 30 years ago, I will laugh at it, the triviality of it and the standard of that. But other than that, there is no way. One has to start, start early, work constantly and in a moderate way. And there is, when you are writing something, some of the enemies of writing a document or a grant application, it's the being perfectionist. That where we spend a lot of time in being perfect and not achieving much there. So you have 
to where you need to know where to stop now whether you are mentoring phd students or you are writing your own publication your grant applications again it's quite okay when you write the a sort of manuscript give it to the colleagues and just leave it with them and get the feedback and in the organization there will be some of the guys who are experienced and who will give you help one more thing is that when you are when i say that actively actively to start early i would say even before that it's very very important is actively wait again it may sound contradictory actively wait is that something when i know that this manuscript i am to write or this document i have to write don't rush it but at the same time go on thinking about it that's what i mean actively wait so that you are building up these thoughts maybe for a couple of days maybe for a week so that when you start putting it together that's again i find that's a good practice at least in my case it works that many a time these ideas that i in mind okay now when you are doing all your science or writing or whatever one thing one need to understand involve don't associate our problem is many a times we get associated with the things and then its ego comes in and that create a lot of problems even in performance even your health even relationships so i would say get yourself involved 100% what you are doing but don't associate you are not what your publication is you are not what one or two lines you have contributed you are what you are involved in the process and let the bigger world judge it see it and i'm pretty sure once you would have gone through the the model of this if one or two lines survive in the literature or maybe if it fortunately appears a line in the textbook somewhere life well spent so then reflecting back to your students if there are some got other performance students that means life well spent so please please don't associate with what you are doing just involve of course in the now i will spend a little bit of time the extension of the working with your client the farmers the industry uh dr stish yeah you can also add a little bit about the uh, group leadership system of ccmb okay uh, i will do that i will thank you yeah let let me see this so now this let me start with this there are two could two kind of positions one is the powers one is called the positional power that i am a recruitment committee has given me what is called the head of the department and i am head of the department at start being like one because i have certain powers and each time i'll say it malum hai am mai kaun hu the second thing is the personal power the idea of group leadership of ccmb this based on this personal power that how your colleagues are perceiving you how your peer group is perceiving you nationally internationally and that gives you the opportunity to lead so in ccmb dr bharu has started this this culture that a group leader is somebody who can lead based on his science his value system ethos and many times a professor level guy can be a member of the group and this gentleman may be only associate professor who is a group leader the professor may be expert in one area but this guy and reputation in terms of contribution much more so this was there was no constitutional or administrative sort of thing to that but it was just a kind of team when they recruit people they recruit at two levels one is that to begin with you are recruited because of your expertise because of some technology you are bringing in and at some point of time you are declared as a project leader based on the performance of the project leader the group previous group leaders they sit and they say all right dr beniwal is good enough now to lead and the kind of voting system and what we used to call it pops election they sit together and they say all right this guy needs to give him this nothing is doc documented but then some day the director will declare that beniwal has been recognized as a group leader in respect to length of service in respect to what others are doing now this gentleman will start leading the group so this group leader we do not do not have till date any formal system of head of the departments so it's just based on the performance and respect or whatever contribution you are doing 
rather than any sort of uh, the head of a department or dean officer. I'm sure in some of the organizations, some of these positions will be needed, but this is what CCMB tried to do that, if it's making some sense of this. Now, the third point I will just briefly now say is that excellence. Like, again, let me remember, by one lecture, Dr. N.C. Ganguly, some of you will remember, some of you may not, he was a wonderful scientist at NDRI. I attended only one class from him, research techniques, and only one lecture. Trust me, even today I can repeat that lecture. In, in fact, he was so wonderful as a speaker and so excellent, and that always carries with me the way how to deal in the class, how to give the lecture. And that's what I say, that giving, having the kind of excellence that people remember you, that even if you have taught only one class, your recognition will come from the peers and nobody else. Those of us who are craving for recognition from the politicians or somewhere else, forget about it. It's of no consequence. Either your junior colleagues, institution, professional societies, and your peer recognition. Now, negative side of this recognition or this, when you are saying the excelling, is that we start craving for positions. And I would again say, rather than craving for positions, it's the leadership if you have in you, automatically people are there to respect you, people are there to make you great, even if you don't want to be great, people are very, very grateful and they will make you great. But we suffer from certain inflammations and in a lighter way, if I can say that, chairmanitis, directoritis, that inflammation that we start having and then we start striving that and that's something which the, the, this is the time that now your end is nearby if you start doing that. So you have to be professional all the time. And the basic line is the fairness and you need to be fair and you need to be perceived to be fair. That's what one say. Now, given the, now the next five, 10 minutes, I will now spend specifically for the veterinary sciences as such and in the context of the present pandemic. Some of us, you would have heard, uh, read the book, Guns, Jones, and Steel by Jared, I think the author is Jared Diamond. And if you haven't, it's a book, book if you are an animal scientist, must read it. And he's talking about the international politics, the way the world is today, purely political world or economic powers. And he tries to make an argument that this is simply based upon the domestication of animals, particularly large mammals they were available. So he says that South Africa is South Africa the way it is because they never domesticated large, large animals. And briefly, if I can say in one sentence, South Africa by the Europe was conquered not by guns, not by factories. It was conquered by organisms that since these people from South America, they were not exposed to livestock and infections of livestock. And as we know, most of this infection in the livestock, they are coming from the wild animal at some stage. They sort of perpetuate in domestic animals and then humans have, then they go to the next stage. All, most of these people, they were killed, their native populations were killed by infectious diseases. So this is now, these are sort of unfortunate times and we are seeing this lesson. This, then the concept as a veterinarian with this idea of one health is extremely, extremely important. In, I, in, I have been fortunate to be a student of NDRI, then I was fortunate to work with basic science institution. Now I'm working in a uh, sort of conventional university and I've got all friends in different institutions of all types. When it comes to, there's nothing like specialization. Specialization, when I say, if I am talking to a molecular biologist, I claim that I am an breeder. And if I'm talking to animal breeders, people, then I say, I'm a molecular biologist. Specialization is nothing but a way to hide my inadequacies. That we need to remember, particularly in the context of the, the endemic, pan endemic, what we are having here, that as a veterinarian, this is an opportunity and challenge, of course, the opportunity that how we start interacting with other specialization, other colleagues, basic sciences because it's going to happen more and more. So this is what I would uh, say there. 
Now, I wanted to talk about a little bit of livelihood and farmers, which at the time I don't think will permit me and I will not spend time there. However, there are certain issues and next two, three minutes I will spend that what it means. As we all know, this talk jolly well, I could have been talking to you colleagues through a seminar in the setting of the university. I have had the opportunity to talk to you, learn about the university more, but due to these times and tough times, pandemic, this is what we are taking the help of the technology. Now, things are going to change. The moment there's a lock, lockdown is over, first thing is going to be the research money is going to be spending, whether nationally or internationally, let's be prepared for it. That means we will have to do things differently. Our buildings are not organized for online classes. Our classrooms are not organized that. We will have to reorganize ourselves. Now, parents will be very, very scared to send their wards now to distant places. Your involvement may come down. You, your diversity may reduce. You may start getting not students from all over Bihar or some other states. You may start getting only from vicinity of Patna. And that will have consequences for all of our work. Now, this is something which we need to think. The way the hostels are organized, I'm pretty sure just now we are trying to think how to organize the exams. And the real issue to me is that how to maintain social distancing in the hostel, where the very purpose in the, the hostel is going to be the sort of having a social environment. So these are the kind of challenges which we will have to meet. These things are not going to go away. As veterinarian, as animal scientists, we have great, great responsibility to start thinking early. And if we will start thinking early, start making these contacts, these our, uh, networking, and start doing things differently, then we can use technology differently and making networks. Now, just to finish, I, I would, I think there's a quotation from Eleanor Roosevelt, the first lady, wife of president of the United States. The great minds discuss ideas and they are really genius. We must follow them. Average minds discuss events, things. We need to teach them and small minds discuss people. The only thing is just ignore them. Now, in organizations, many times we'll see, Dean Saab ye keh rahe the head department ye keh raha tha, student ye keh raha tha, wo recruitment waise hua tha, yeh se hua tha. It's our own choice. If I can close my ears, close my mouth. Now, as a particular, as a young faculty, one I need to understand that there's no point in discussing people that doesn't help anybody, either the organization or whatever. And I remember one of my colleagues, Satyapal and Dr. Ramesh Singh might have come across this gentleman. He was at IVRI, Livestock Production Gentleman. He's, he used to write only Satyapal, at, that was the CS I. I was 24, I joined ARS. And this, after two, three days, he said, well, you seem to be a nice guy. I have to give you two advice even without asking. And I'm sure those two pieces of advice, they are still relevant and I'm happy to share that. And he said, one, as you grow up in the organization, you will see many people who will be there to touch your feet. Don't trust them. Because if I want to make you fall, the easiest and the best way is that I touch your feet and I pull you. And you know what will happen. And the second thing is, you soon you will be getting the responsibility of your juniors, your subordinates, so-called don't hurt them because if you hurt your subordinate you are not going to get anything you hit them him, him or her once and the guy will die twice if you have guts and you have some mischief in your mind go and confront your boss and i'm sure you will get the hit back and you will get a lot of learnings in the process so that's something i'm glad to share satyapal i don't know where he is at the moment at that time, he was 40, 45, whether he's involved or not. I wish he's there somewhere. And I now end with this. 
what is called APR, ACR. I don't know what you call it in your organization, but confidential report or performance appraisals, which we have to do all the time. And I will share a very personal experience of 30 years or 35 years. The final assessment as a reporting officer or as a reviewing officer, I never wrote myself. I used to, though the rules don't provide, because the moment you say confidential, rules don't provide. I call the gentleman of the woman and say, sit here. This is what you have said. This is what your reporting officer has said. Now you tell me out of this, I should do outstanding, extraordinary, average. Where do you think you belong to? And I can bet, at least for me, it has worked so wonderfully well. And only lesson I learned is that people underestimate themselves. They don't overestimate. And in fact, one gentleman, always I remember, Dr. Mr. Parthasarthi, who started his career as a technician with me, now he's a senior technical officer at CCMB. In one such meeting, I said, Partha, I am going to put you extraordinary because your performance has been really, really excellent this year. And this guy pleaded, no, sir, put me one notch down. And I was curious that why. And he said, look, if this year I'm extraordinary, early previous year I was not. And if by next year, if I'm not extraordinary, it will be seen that I'm not sincere with my work. So it's, I'll be safer that you put one notch below than what you are assessing me. So this is something what you, I would say to the colleagues that when you are trying to assess, it's just a peer review process. And this profession, if you are sincere, honest, fair, this is going to give you much, much more than what you are going to give it to it. Let me stop here with a lot of thanks and then I'm ready to whatever I have said or whatever my thoughts I have shared. They're not really cardinal principle, but some of these thoughts of the last 40 years I have tried to share with you. Thank you very much. I'm really grateful for giving me this opportunity. And I'm here to take some of the discussion. Thank you, Professor Kishmar, uh, for uh, deliberating on different uh, aspects and uh, especially related to the career development and you know, different aspects of uh, university life and uh, this scientific and academic culture. So we have a couple of questions in the chat box. Okay. If you can um, uh, have a look and then um, oh, okay. address all as you, yeah, as you can. One is from Dr. Raman Trivedi, our uh, director of uh, students welfare. So how to attract talented students and motivate them to become entrepreneurs? So two things. Okay. Now, the, 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 in, the, in, the, in the university setup, if I have to say, there are three things. The first is the teacher. Second is the library. And library, I'm defining in a broader term. The resources, what you have, the teachers, the library, or the resources, and the, the environment. Now, the, the when it comes to PhD students, the PhD students, they join based on the reputation of the faculty. That, that goes without saying, and the reputation of the institution. Now, when it, if, if you are doing extremely well, if you have got four or five faculty who are doing extremely well, students will come in. They will seek because the, the family, the student come from there. So the, the, in my experience, to attract the best, you have to be the best. There is no shortcut available to that. Okay. So I don't know how else I can build up on it. The, the stu one more thing is, these days, don't underestimate students. When I was joining NDRI, my feedback, if I can tell the audience, was Professor Ramesh Singh, and he advised me that NDRI is a better place than HEU, for whatever reasons, and I did. However, these days, the students are well prepared. They have a lot of information available. And in multi various ways, the information is available. So it's just about the quality of the faculty, quality of the teacher that will attract excellent students. There is no other way around. That's at least my understanding. Thank you, sir. Uh, anything on entrepreneurship? 
motivating students to become entrepreneurs. Okay. Now, again, the entrepreneurship, as I said when I was saying, when you are planning the research, if your faculty is planning the research that, okay, this is a vaccine I need to develop, that's my motto, that's my objective, and that's what I'm going to work. The chances are that the students around will also have the entrepreneurship. Okay? If m many times we do not have, as a faculty, my criteria is that, okay, how I'm going to get, get my promotion, I have to get my next grant, and that is based on publication, some kind of patents, and many times when you go to the patents, I have a very poor opinion about the patents, that they, they are good for padding up these CVs. I'm not saying that one should not patent things, but ultimately the test of the, of the pudding is in eating. So if, if there is, you know, the institution will have to have an environment of entrepreneurship. And this is a very professional thing. You need to have people or experts available because you and me are not MBAs. We do not know the market. So that's where we need to start in check having a group which understand the business rules, which understand the market. The faculty starts interacting from time to time. And whenever, again, that reminds me of Dr. Ganguly in the year, he used to all of a sudden will come to any lab which I have no concern with him and he will say, okay, I want to spend time with your students and what you have been doing. Now, this is where the guy who is interested in developing an entrepreneurship at the university level, whether you call it direct research extension, will have to have rapport with the faculty and in turn, the students will have to have in terms of, in, I have introduced at our university a course in entrepreneurship, but a course is all, all right, you can give them alphabets, but ultimately, again, it's the environment. One more thing that helps is having your research projects funded by the industry. Because ICR gives you money and rarely anybody asks what did you do with the money. If an industry fellow has given you money, the least the guy is going to give you, next round he will not give you. So there is a pressure there. So involving with the, with the marketplace, in the beginning itself that you are getting the money from the industry, that helps. And there are certain students which are better than others. Um, there, there is always a variability. If one can identify and put them together and help them. The second thing is that the entrepreneurship will have to be, a, 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 a guy of my age cannot develop an entrepreneurship, even if I have some leads. Again, if as a professor or the associate professor, I have certain leads, we can identify certain students and say, all right, these are something you can take forward. Provide that kind of environment, the proof of principle in the organization itself, that all right, we will take you hold hands and take you to some level, and then you find the money from outside. And again, it's a two process from the management of the university as well as the faculty. And each one of the faculty will have to have always in mind, we cannot, basic science is important, fantastic. But I don't think basic science and product development and innovation, they are different. They are one and the same thing, whatever way you look at it, unless there is a basic science, there is no product development and you cannot sell what you are doing. There's no point of doing and pretending that I'm doing great. Uh, next is uh, regarding your experience that, uh, regarding constraints. Okay. Your own experience. Uh, okay. So I would, I would reply this is slightly differently. Within six months of recruiting a faculty, I can predict lifetime productivity of that faculty. Okay? Maybe I'm sounding a little arrogant. And what, in, what you call in animal breeding terms, part lactation and lifetime productivity. First six months, you can segregate the faculty, newly recruited faculty in two categories immediately. And it's a binomial distribution. There's nothing else. One guy will say, Computer nahi hai. Sab se pehle wo computer dhundega, printer dhundega. Usse bhi pehle table ka size dekhega. Usse bhi pehle bedne ki jagah kahan hai wo dekhega. Or uske baad lab mein ye nahi hai, ye nahi hai. Purchase wala kam nahi karta. Ye jo category hai, I can guarantee you, rest of their life you are in tough waters. Nothing will happen. There will be another category of guy. Keep on watch will do something depending on whatever is available and come back to you and say, dear Vice Chancellor, this is what I have done. And the Vice Chancellor will get excited. 
that all line and will suggest me what next to do and where whatever it is so when it comes to this is the way i think i would like to reply to that constraints okay. are in the mindset constraints are in the mindset the reason is not that i have passed through that generation of the time of my age always there will be constraint always there will be constraint even another, another point is uh, uh, thank you i, I yeah. think uh, you have conveyed your message and uh, this is regarding variability in the learning ability of students absolutely now the each each one of the student ab mai usko dusre way mein bolta hu kai baar faculty ko kehta hai ki yaar wo kehte hain yaar wo kaam nahi kar raha to mai kehta hu agar kahin to isne acha hi kiya hoga tabhi to yahan tak pahuncha hai 8thi mein pass kiya hoga 10thi mein kiya hoga project theek kiya hoga the point is the students who have come to us they have done something good somewhere there may be certain aspects of that particular person and that's where as a teacher we need to find out that what is that strength of that particular student i i if if somebody asked me to sing for the last one hour i would have told away all the audience immediately now this is one has to build on the strength of the students there is a variability certain students will require extra effort in fact again i would share my experience i am a very good teacher for a brilliant student and i am very good to teacher for a student who was the top bottom 10% but i am a very bad student for the middle level students unfortunately majority of them are in the middle level okay so that means we need to spend time trying to understand the constants of a student and of course our social realities are such that when when the student comes language may be one issue in fact one of my best phd students from ccmb proved to be one dr vijay pal singh he is in the us he was the most productive when he came to me the first day he did not know how to speak two sentences of english hindi medium bsc no writing skills he did not know how to handle a paper because no dissertation and he did not know how to handle a mouse because the first day i still remember when he started handling a mouse he was seeing which is the ventral side and he was curious in which is the dorsal side he proved to the best the reason the, re, the the way i had to deal with him was the first day i told him that aapko git bit karne wale bahut student milenge unki parwah mat karna ye angrezi angrezi to main tumko sikha dunga jab zarurat padegi but you concentrate on your subject now that example i am giving you that you have to treat each student as an individual in their own right and individually i cannot do that because if there are 20 30 40 50 students in the class but i am pretty sure collectively a faculty which are in touch with them 20 faculty they can always distribute the work or they can do some kind of advisor system this is apart from the what we call the supervisor system that student advisor if we can have from the very beginning whether it's a social problem relationship problem family problem many a times you would come across all of a sudden one student otherwise doing okay all of a sudden the performance drops and it has nothing to do with the university environment it has not to do with the family situation back home so that's where we need to have a very very great rapport some teacher somewhere the place will have to be open opened up opening welcoming that the student feel unintimidated and can go back and talk right thank you uh one uh, theory regarding choosing a research project how to choose a research project all right now this is something this is something this is it's wonderful your answer can never be better than your question okay and then you are stuck now if if you are let's say in the we are in the animal science or whatever i would try to quote mahatma gandhi there and i don't remember verbatim but what he said is that when you are in confusion think of the last person in the line and think about him and then you will get the answer if you we are in the veterinary profession and to trying to choose a problem so our client is the farmer my client is this is the animal because animal is also very important component there and the social realities so if my problem is not related with that i don't think it's going to be 
of any consequences. So these two, the, for the youngsters, particularly new faculty, I will suggest, have two, three areas to begin with, because you do not know what is going to sort of take off, rather than you have to cover your risks. So in terms of, particularly when you are picking up the problem, don't pick up something because it's fashionable. And I, during the talk, I said that pick up something that really requires solution. Chances are that you will fail, but then that failure will also give you nothing. But in the first place, if you have picked up irrelevant problem, which is not relevant at all, and ironically, if I can say that if I'm posted at a camel research institute and I say, I'm going to design a shoe for the camel so that the life of the camel will be comfortable in desert, right? Now, jokes apart, I have seen one project of crop sciences in one of those review meetings, and the gentleman was trying to do solve a problem through transcriptomics of flooding in Bengal Gram. Bengal Gram may flooding ke baad transcriptom pe kya hoga? Wo solve karne ki koshish kar raha tha. To mujhe pata tha ki ye bachcha jo hai, isne na to Bengal Gram dekha hai, na kabi gaon mein raha, na kabi khet dekha hai. Bengal Gram to hota hi wahan hai jab pani ki bhot kami hoti hai. ठीक है. So this is what I would say when we are trying to choose a problem and when when again, when we have got this idea of some of the bright students or some of the bright faculty who get, get this, I think Vice Chancellor they say, this is what I have to do, I Okay. Now, again, as a leader or as a dean research or something, you have to put up in a context and the convincing power. I remember one incident PM Bhargava told, there was a student and he's a established cancer geneticist now in the US. Uh, his name was Pandey. I'm forgetting the first thing. And he did not want to join a shock care supervisor and supervisor. Shock care was one of the kept group leaders at CCMB. Bhargava called Pandey as a PhD student, nine o'clock in his office, three o'clock in the morning. Pandey was convinced that a shock care is the place where Pandey will be joining. So that's where it tells us that the, the, as, as leaders, organizational managers, we need to have the patience and we need to convince the, the younger faculty that this is the particular area and have to have a vision. So that's what I, I, I would say. Some will get convinced easily and some will not, particularly the brighter lot will certainly say that this is what I want to do. One, one thing finally I would say at this point is that please, please, watch out particularly those who are coming from abroad after doing their postdocs and PhD. I have nothing against PhD and postdoc from abroad, wonderful thing, but in veterinary science, as we know, there's a term called dystochia. Most of these colleagues, they suffer from dystochia. Whatever the problem of the Angres Sahib is, they come into India, they try to do that, Distilled water for them or millipore water for them is coming from the wall. No idea from where it is coming. And they end up exactly trying to imitate what the mentor was doing in the US or UK. Unfortunately, that mentor is an established guy. You are not an established guy. Neither you can complete, nor the problem is relevant. And then ultimately you end up only being extended postdoc of the same mentor by these bilateral programs, collaborations, visits, or whatever. Maybe. So that's what I would say is that we need particularly, I try to encourage people who are coming from training abroad that forget about what you have been working on. Remember your training and now pick up a problem relevant to us. Another uh, question is also uh, on public education and all that, that particularly those who work in the clinics. We have uh, clinics in all veterinary colleges. Right, sir. Uh, so the scientists want to know how they can publish in uh, high impact journals. Okay. All right. Now, this is, this is, the, the ideas and the problem, where from the problem will come? The, this, the people who are working in extension, who are working in the clinics, and who are working or who are reading. Okay. Actually, the ideas are going to be generated in the clinics. So this is something that particularly when you are 
trying to have multidisciplinary approach. People who are in contact, the touch with the animals and they know the real problems. I'm pretty sure they can be very, very helpful in, in making teams and in trying to contribute. May not be many a times, you may not be corresponding author, but your contribution will be immense. Now, again, uh, uh, the, the point I would like to say that when people are getting evaluated in the profession, in fact, uh, somebody will remind me, IVI, there's a surgeon, I'm forgetting the name of the gentleman, a wonderful surgeon, what is his name? The... Dr. Powery. Huh. Exactly, Dr. Powery, right? Now me, not being a veterinarian in per se, not being a surgeon at all, still I remember that guy. And he has been in the clinic and he has been doing a marvelous job. Never I bothered to see the publication records of Dr. Powery. And if you see the publication records of uh, the gentleman who discovered protein sequencing and DNA sequencing, right? I don't think this guy will pass even any test of any review committee or whatever, he, but he has two Nobel Prizes. Third one probably he should have got. And you know, the gentleman, this, this, uh, the, what's uh, uh, getting old now, I'm forgetting the name. Somebody will help me to remind me. The Nobel laureate, he got two Nobel Prizes, one for protein sequencing, one for DNA sequencing. Sanger. Uh, Sanger, right, Sanger. There is an institute in the name of Sanger. Yeah. And this total publication may not be 15, more than 15 or whatever. So this, this publications are important, publications, because ultimately this is what we communicate to people that what we are doing, but we have to think, have things in context and for people, ultimately, whatever happens, whatever we people are doing, it will end up either in the clinic or it will end up with the farmer in trying to help him to make a little bit more extra income. So. That's what uh, I would say yeah, about. We have two more uh, small questions. No. I think you can take. <laughs> One is uh, how to become a leader without hurting others. Okay, okay. I think this is a, this is a, this is a, this is a tough one. Okay. Now, but also, if you see retrospectively, it's not very tough either. If we only remember. And then again, I will relate it to the students. Please, please engage the students in team sports when they are in your university. Very, very important. I may be a great center forward, but if somebody, does, if I'm a bad team player, nobody is going to give me a pass and I can't convert into goal. Though I am a leader, but my leadership is dependent on somebody even the whatever who is going to give me the pass. Second thing, if my goalkeeper, I, I push 10 goals and my goalkeeper is generous and allows to be pushed with 12 goals, no leadership is going to be helpful. So this idea of building teams that as a, without, in fact, I would say that it's not a question of hurting. A leader will be one who can take help from others. If you don't know how to take help from others, I don't think you are going to be leader. Absolutely no way. And that is true in, in, in academics. Gone are the days, unless of course you are a mathematician, theoretician, and powerful computer simulations, maybe you can do that. But even there, if you are a sort of bioinformatics guy, build hypothesis, you will have to go back to somebody, experimental scientist, and say, can you check this hypothesis for me? So this is where I would say, so uh, if somebody thinks that I will be leader, I will say that I will be leader. So this is where I would say, so if somebody thinks that I will be leader, I will say that I will be leader. So I will I <laughs> I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I don't know what. Right. what you only, yeah. only one can motivate oneself. By example, by, uh, by you know. it's, one can motivate oneself, and right. it's, uh, motivating somebody is a plus ball. The moment the boy or the guy is in your chamber, the guy right. is motivated. 
the moment he steps out you know what he's going to tell others ki mera sala ek ghanta waste kar diya aur wahi baat pichli baar bhi kare by your conduct only they are by conduct only and particularly if and, and there are certain and, and there is one one more thing if you are an expert and contributing significantly there is no point that i want to be leader some people are great and they can be leader some are not but that doesn't mean that they are, they are worthless that's also the organization will have to imbibe that that value system that ultimately it's excellence and excellence at all levels some people are very good in uh, making a group of people and they they can put together right and as we say in in, in the table tennis in the lawn tennis we say non playing captain the captain is not playing but still yeah. the non captain we have a long tradition in india that's the captain yeah and the head of the department migrated from engineering <laughs> because the leadership in microbiology failed so that's why the director thought fit to give a leader from engineering to a microbiology you know you know you know sir there are there are many examples no 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 even myself i am an example and you would have seen in one of the by affiliation that i am supposed to i have not done any yoga i am the head of the department of the yoga department and head of the nutrition department blah 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 this comes because we are recruiting that process and somebody will have to there to sign the things but then what i have found out is that the guy i pick up the senior most guy in yoga and i tell him that wherever you need my signatures and you know whom to abuse you tell me that who is to be abused and i will do that for your behalf so you go on doing and managing your department so that's that's integrity so in yoga we'll take the last question and that is regarding how can we give emotional support to students and uh, while maintaining discipline and professional boundaries all right okay okay ah. the, the, okay hello are you able to hear ah i'm okay go ko beech mein thoda now professional see the professional there 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 is such an issue some students there may be student will be able to come and talk about the problem based on a the students who are capable and you can give some solutions b that you can patiently listen to and c you can keep things confidential okay. it is if you are able to do this that i don't think there is a contradiction between professional responsibility and giving emotional support in in i will just want to come to come to my mind immediately there were so many students in the hospital when i took up one and a half years ago who were occupying the hospital just for the sake of it without paying legally i took them to them out one student came to me and he said my parents are in the state block and i am living in the hostel this way because there is no other way and if you are going to throw me out of the hostel i will have to leave my msc and i asked this boy that what is your grade point in this semester and he said something in the type of i did a little bit of more homework the university will not provide me any way that i can what to say that i can take care of his hostel fees i thought for a while and i said look i have a flat i am living alone and there is a servant quarter which is having an opening which is independent of my house you go and start sleeping there i don't think i really transgressed in my professional relationship i don't think i really mixed up with that boy now he is doing his dissertation from indian institute of physics have got admission for phd abroad now the point is we will have to make exceptions the that we have to look other way around and that the students have to have that faith in you that okay here is a teacher who can look around and find solutions out of place and each one of us will have our own at times i i i look the other way when i see that look you know there is no way they can go can support me here i do the other way around and i say okay this is the way i going going to do that so i would say there is no particular 
professional responsibility and providing emotional support. But again, it, it depends upon what kind of relationship you have built with the student. And confidentiality is very, very important. Very important issue. Okay. This is something where emotional support you can provide. One, one student who was a master student in English, during around five o'clock in the classroom, in the classroom, I caught them in compromising situation. Very tough, toughest thing I found in my life so far dealing with the students. To deal with that. Now, in fact, slowly, slowly, rapport with the guy, and that more. Then he got selected in the Commonwealth. He kept telling me that now the stage, this stage now he's a Commonwealth student, and he is gone. And I promised to him, ever, ever I revealed to anybody that who was that student, what did I do, what he confessed to. That's again very, very important. And that's a thing on the friends of we can provide. There was a, uh, one example uh, doing rounds on uh, WhatsApp and other social media. And one uh, student steals a watch in the class, and the teacher asks everybody to, you know, <clears throat> close their eyes or put some, you know, cloth on the eyes. And then the search takes place, and the watch comes out. But nobody knows from where it has come out. Right. After many years, the student comes from somewhere. He's a big guy, and he says, "You saved me that day." And uh, uh, the I stole the watch, but you did not reveal to anybody. So I'm grateful to you for saving me uh, from embarrassment, and I learned a lot from that. Then the teacher says that I also did not see, and I was never not knowing that you have. Oh it is the you. Okay. So that example uh, fits into this. <laughs> and uh, uh, thank you. Uh, we are through with the all the questions, and uh, I uh, heartily thank Dr. Sudhish Kumar for sparing his very valuable time, and uh, you know. Uh, coming out uh, with his thoughts and with his experience of dealing with the research, dealing with teaching, dealing with the special situations, uh, especially with the students. And um, I also thank all the uh, faculty and participants who are here for sparing their uh, very valuable time and uh, putting uh, the questions, the interaction we have seen uh, were some quite good questions. So uh, <clears throat> we continue with the series uh, and uh, that was peace. Also, I request uh, you, you can recommend some more uh, you know, uh, experts who, who can uh, speak on uh, specific issues or uh, general issues. And uh, we, we are trying to uh, do our bit uh, for the faculty uh, during this period, otherwise they are taking regular classes. I got a feedback uh, uh, on the classes because most of the teachers are here that some of the teachers are just reading out the activities to the students. So uh, I'm telling in front of Dr. Sakish Kumar and uh, he's a <laughs> Uh, one of us. <laughs> he's one of us. Sorry, he belongs to. I call it feeling in the students' activity. Pardon? I call it killing, killing the students' activity. Okay. Uh, so uh, take note of that, how to reach out to the students and explain the subject. Reading PPT is not delivering a lecture. You have to deliver a lecture. So we improve on that and uh, move forward. Once again, on behalf of uh, all the uh, participants here, I express my sincere gratitude and thanks to Dr. Sakish Kumar. Have a nice time and all the best. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much. And I thank sir. you all the faculty and particularly Deepak, who has been very helpful in putting us together. I really convey my regards to him. Thank you very much. And it's a pleasure you, talking to If I can be of any help anytime. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Sir. Thank you. We close the session here. Thank you. Many, many decades. So it's always a pleasure. Okay, sir. thank you, sir. Thank you. Sir.